Here's the question. Yeah. Is it a top five roster in the NFL, though? Magic transition right there. Um, All right, so let's get into it. Yeah. I did 10. Chris did it, took a half day and only did five. <laughs> That's okay though. Um, so we went through. Here's the here's the exercise. Right. And I I liked doing this a lot. Yes. Because I checked in with a lot of sources. I looked over at Pro Football Focus too from talking to you all the time. Yep. I just tried to isolate these rosters away from the quarterback. Cool. So I tried to it's I fun. tried to become you. It's fun. Yes. It's a, this is a good this is a good a good uh, conversation, a good exercise. So what this is, is the roster, the talent on the roster minus the quarterback. Right. That's all we're looking at right That's now. That's all we're looking at. On paper. On paper. Exactly Who's the right. best team on paper right exactly. now? Exactly. Right? right, right. And, you know, we had this conversation a little bit before the podcast where it's like, you know, and we talked about just because you got a top five roster doesn't mean you're necessarily a top five team. I don't think so. You know, again, it, it, you know, you can match it up where where this team's roster completely is not as good as this team, but they put their resources in a spot that makes sense for the way they're coached and how they play. The scheme that, they play. The scheme they play yeah. and how that goes to where, yeah, I maybe as a whole, and if we all had a generic coach, I would take this roster, but – on this team with this coach, this roster makes sense in a lot of yeah. ways, right? You can't you, have it all always, and it's, it's a balancing act in, in the modern NFL. You don't play the games on paper, but you do rank the top five rosters. No doubt. Paper, that's the way to say it. So let's let's start with some of the teams maybe that didn't make your list. Yeah. You want to do that first here? You're, you're no, ten... let's, do the, let's do our list first okay. and all then right. go there. You okay, okay. with that? Right, let's do that. You sure? Five to one. You didn't really like that. I could tell. No, but... that's fine. I, th- I think that does, that does make sense because we don't want to give away anything right, right now because right. people might think we have a team at number one where we don't even have them in the top 10 could be shocking <laughs> like that uh so let's start let's start with you yeah your first uh number, number five. five and and how difficult was separating five from the rest of them? oh I, I actually found my top five pretty easy okay it's six through ten as we were you know that i was like oh my gosh i felt like i had you know six through 14 where i was like oh my gosh this is nitpicky here yeah right um but i i found my top five when i got into it for the most part i went hmm I feel pretty good about this. My number five is going to be the Baltimore Ravens. Ooh. Yep. I'm going to go with the Ravens. You know, you look across the roster. First off, I'm a sucker for big guys and power and all that. Their O-line, I think, is going to be back, we you know, with Linderbaum into it. Jawan Jones, James at right tackle, even if it's not him, and it's Morgan Moses. Zeitler, still good guard. Ronnie Stanley, before he got hurt a few years ago, was the best left tackle in football. You know, now he's going to battle that out probably with Trent Williams. And then tight end play special. You know, running backs, very good. Now, a little bit not healthy yet, but I'm kind of like, okay, let's week four. They're going to be healthy and ready to go. Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, they'll be hitting on all cylinders. Patrick Queen, the secondary. I mean, when you talk about Kyle Hamilton with Marcus Williams and then, you know, Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters, I just go, holy shit. Yeah, so I'm going to put the Ravens in in the top five. Yeah, Yeah. Jalen Armour Davis, my guy there. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You talk to close personal friend friend of the podcast yeah um i had the ravens in the uh, honorable mention uh, okay. category outside of even my top 10 Ooh. And, which speaks to how many deep teams there, there are. are i did try to bias towards like you said the big guys yeah the good defensive lines the right. good offensive lines right um it's but hard the receiver thing scared you probably with the ravens where you look were, at that there were some holes that just were you know some of these teams are average ish you right. know, top 10 ish in yeah. a lot more categories right than the ravens you're right like wide receiver was one of those probably dark no name and, pass rusher i think exactly. probably scares people a little bit you know and, and again i'm a little more in the weeds than you where i go like you know i'm expecting a away to be like a real force on the edge i know he he was good last year but i'm looking at him going i think this is like he becomes like like one of the better edge pass rushers in football this year. Yeah. So, you know, I'm projecting a little bit there. And, and listen, I'm not mad at you for, for what you're saying there. I think that's why it's good and, and why you have a good perspective with this because you're going to be able to project a little bit more. Maybe. Than, I'm, right. I'm looking at what's on paper, maybe right. what they did last year, what they signed in the in the offseason. And what I, what I do think for you in these exercises where we both do a top five is that normally you get hammered for your picks, right? Normally everyone's just like jumping all over you down yeah. your throat for yeah. your picks. When I do a pick, alongside you i feel like a lot of people go like what was ahmed thinking <laughs> it makes it better what for an me idiot. it makes it a lot better for you <laughs> good, yeah so good. i think this is gonna this is gonna benefit you uh, my number five is the new orleans saints okay i and listen i hear you there do they, you have them in your top five they're in my t- okay. they're in my they're not in my top five but they were in my top 10 for sure 
So, I mean, talent all over the defense. Mm-hmm. Demario Davis has been locking down that defense as yep. a linebacker for a long time. Pete yep. Warner had a good year last year out of sure. Ohio State. Sure. You got the DBs now with Marshawn Lattimore. Tyron Matthew comes over. Right. See, I'm not as excited about that. Ooh, you know, so that, that, but so that's cool. I get it. That's Cam all Jordan, right. though, you excited about him? Of still? course, but he's a little bit older, so oh. I just went. Uh. And then who's the other pass rusher? I just Marcus Davenport. I know. So he's all Wind over the healthy. place. Yeah. yeah. But uh, they got big D line and big O-Line. O-Line. David Onyemata yes. up front. Yes. Right. And then I still think Elvin Kamara, top tenish, you know, yes. running back. Sure. There, Mark Ingram. Right. And they got some talent in the wide receiver room. You they said do. Chris Olave, Michael Thomas. We'll see if he can come back healthy and Jarvis, Jarvis Landry. Yeah. I I, I hear you. For I, I'm no. You, that's a good argument. I'm not mad at you for having them in the top five. Okay. No doubt about it. Lattimore, a corner special. The other corner. Hey, Paul Sanadivo. Like, yeah. You know. He was good. I like the way he looked. You know, I think he's going to make the step and be better too. And Chauncey Gardner Johnson's a hell of a nickelback. So, you know, I think the Saints are the forgotten team in the NFC where I just go, I watch out for them for sure. You say you're not mad at me for that one. I feel like there might be a team in here that you are mad at me. All for, right. Well, we'll probably. See. Yes. Right, number four for I'm you. I'm mad you didn't wear your red pants today. Um, <laughs> red shirt. There's always something. Red. I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs as my number four team. All right. Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City. Um, first off, I think the receivers are damn good across the board. I know there's no Tyree Kill, but I just go, whoa, there's a lot of good ones, and it's fine. We know the tight end is special. The O-line, to me, is in the conversation for the best pass-protecting O-line in all of football. Then you get into the running backs. They, they got running backs falling off the tree. Even though none of them might be a superstar, I think they're all kind of good. And I'm, I really like McKinnon, as you know. And then... I'm a, you know, the defense, hey, Chris Jones, arguably the best defensive tackle in football, not named Aaron Donald, and he might actually be right up there in that the kind of range with him, you know. And then you know, I'm expecting to see the Frank Clark that we saw towards the end of the season last year. You know I like the Carlathis guy and how yeah. he looks, all right. I even like uh, the, um, the the big, uh, the, their, their starting end right now from Michigan. I'm blanking on his name, you know. Um, no, Dana, Dana. Um, Right? I'm, I'm thinking I'm right about that. Oh, hold on. Mike Dana, excuse me. Yes. I'm sorry. I, I pull names off the top of my head all day long. I don't always sit here and look at things <laughs> like that. Uh, so that, and I love young corner, right? And Trent McDuffie so far. I like Legereus Sneed a lot. And their two safeties to me are under the radar really freaking good with, with Reed and Thornhill. So, yeah. And then the two linebackers got Speed and Bolton and Gay, and you know I liked even the Leo Chanel. So I'm putting them up there. I'm putting them up there. I can see you don't have them in the top five, honorable, but maybe you're doubting it now. Honorable mention for me. In <laughs> right. the mix, though, right. for the same reasons that you, that yeah. you mentioned there. Frank Clark improved maybe yeah. year this year for him right teaming up with jones i think a lot of it hinges on the rookies you've liked what you've seen from yeah. Laftis so far yeah um how does that secondary look exactly um was a little bit I of a change over yeah you might be higher on the wide receivers I than know. i am yes and uh the running backs haven't proven to be uh above average no that, yeah, that, that unit it's a good so group far. it's not i'm good gonna say group. it's great i mean yeah, kelsey right. kind of gives them a nice boost because uh-huh. you might say he's the best tight end weapon in all of football probably that is the case so they were just outside my uh, my top five. All right, so stop stalling. Who's your freaking four? Four for me, the 49ers. Okay. They're in your They're going to be in my top five. All right, so yes. I, won't, I won't go too uh, too long on this one, but it's just you, you look all around, like, you know, top five defensive line. Are they top five in wide receiver room? You got maybe top two in tight end in George Kittle. I'm basically stealing all your lines for when you Don't talk about steal the 49ers. Go ahead. Keep so. doing it. And I think even, like, the running backs, like Elijah Mitchell. I they're mean, all that, good. He seemed good and fast. Yeah, they're all good. I mean, if Jeff Wilson's healthy, you know, the, the kid they drafted in the fourth round, uh, you know, Price Davis. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm with you. Fred Warner to me is the best. Yeah. M- m- I messed up his name. Yes, uh, Fred Warner I think is the best middle linebacker in football. I mean, Nick Bosa is in the conversation for one of the best defensive players in football. Yes, you know, and some of the young guys that they have, like I like them. So I'm 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 not mad at you at all. And even you know, I don't think you know, I like that they have Traverius Ward who's been a little banged up. That's going to help the corner position, and even the safeties, you know. And this is another name I'm going to blow, Ahmed. You know, we're getting to that point in the podcast. Hufunga. Oh, boy. Hufunga from USC, who I had my eye on. And, you know, he shed weight and got faster. And I project him to be a pretty damn good player. And, you know, uh, so, so yes, there, there's. I'm not mad at you there at all. And so, they'll be coming up for me soon. Yeah, the question is how high are they I for know. you? Your number three team is which team? My number three team, I'm going with the Philadelphia Eagles. 
Yep. I just, you know, you, you it's a little bit like you just said with the 49ers. I mean, O-line, I don't know. It's in the conversation for best in football. D-line, even though there might not be the marquee pass rusher, it's like size and strength by numbers. I mean, Darius yeah. Slay and Bradbury at corner, right? You know, then you look at the receivers on the outside, like, whoa. I, the tight end, Goddard's really freaking good. So I just look at them and go, yeah, I, I don't. There's no team in football that the Eagles are going to step on the field with and go, oh well, we feel like we're a little miss, we're a little outmatched here. Definitely one of the best rosters in the sport for me. Yeah, they're they're number eight for me. I okay. could have had I could have had them higher. All right, because like you meant, like on defense, there's not a below average group like no. linebackers, defensive line, secondary, all average or above average. Right. Right. Yep. Could have the best offensive line in football. Linebackers a question a little bit. Okay. Right. You know, I'm, I'm forgetting about Hassan Reddick too. I should exactly. have mentioned yeah. he can be another. You know, he's going to be a, a a a nickel third down pass rusher too that I think is going to add to them. And you know, my, uh, um, you know, um, uh, Sweat is really good. Right. And and of course, we know they got, you know, big 56 still. That's really damn good, too. As you could tell, I'm just blank. Brandon Graham, you know, Derek Barnett, all those Josh Sweat, you know, and then for the, the, the D tackles are special. So, yeah, I, I look at them and, you know, I, I'm I'm more of a a whore for big people. Yeah. Than maybe you are. And Fletcher Cox. Exactly. Too. Exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, Jaquaski Tart. I like the addiction addition there. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things I like about their team. But you mentioned Slay and Bradbury too. Not a whole lot of teams have two shutdown corners. Pretty damn like good that. there. I, I definitely could have had the Eagles in the top five. And it just goes to show you're not going to have the Eagles as the number three team in football. It just no. goes to show the Right, what right. A, what a quarterback and how it all fits together. we got to see how it fits together. Exactly yeah. right. It's a, it's a great way to put it. You're exactly right. My number three team, Yeah, this is the one that might make you mad. I, I don't know how you're going to feel about mm-hmm. this. The Green Bay Packers. Mm. The Green Bay Packers are number three. Yep. Okay. Um, I don't agree with that. But I know. Yeah. They got, but here's hear, hear me out. Yeah, They sure. got studs all over defense. You got Rashawn Gary, who had a great year last year. Yes. Kenny Clark. You got some rookies that you liked in Quay Walker. Devontae Wyatt, right. beast, out of Georgia. Right. Uh, Devondre Campbell was an all-pro last year. Maybe yeah. you're not sold on him. Kind of yep. came out of nowhere. Exactly right. Pro I, I, I want to see a little more. It's like a, it's a, all of a sudden he just came I out know. of nowhere after being you know third team in three years. Right. He was the number two ranked linebacker last year. I know. Pro yeah, if, he can back year. That, if he can back that up right. or come close to something like that, then they got something. I mean, you have a secondary that was good last year even without Jair Alexander, mm-hmm. Rasul uh Douglas yeah. was a, was a big part of that offensive line. You had Stokes, their first rounder at yes. corner from the other side. So I'm, listen, I I hear you. Offensive side of the ball. I mean, I think you could say that the offensive line there are injury concerns, but if healthy, maybe top five. Yeah, I probably and wouldn't go that high, but yes, top ten. It's good. Yeah, right. Exactly right for me. There you go. And running back the combo of Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, top five ish maybe for for a combo in football. I mean, the wide receivers unproven. That might be the only weak group that they have, but it just seemed like they were above average in my like in yeah, my opinion okay. and what I've seen out Don't there. Don't worry, good. I, I mean, listen, I are hope they even in your top? They're not even in your top ten. They were like they're dancing and they're they're like the team that I kind of came to with like oh, are they ten? Are they eleven? I'm not sure. There, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I guess I don't quite put the offensive line quite where you do. I guess I look at it that way. The running backs are. It's a very good duo, but I don't. I'm not like. Oh, and that puts it over the top for me. And then the receiver, tight end part of it. You know, and then even you know, I you're right. I love the rookies. I really do. The Devonje Campbell thing is real. I don't know exactly how to feel about him going in this year. You know, and then yes, Rashawn Gary is really damn I, I guess I'm I there's just I wish there was a little bit more marquiness on the front seven that I'm just not sure about, I guess, to a degree, even though I know it's gonna be a really damn good unit. And this is one I could be wrong on. I mean, listen, I, I, I'm maybe I'm probably one of those guys that's a little lower on the Packers than most people as far as their roster. I mean, what what was obvious to me when looking at it though, too, is that the defense really could be, carry them. I, it could I, be very it could be very strong. No question. They they might be a Rodgers be efficient. We're going to run the ball a little bit more. And defense, you know, hold them to 17 and we'll win every game. And they they certainly could be that style for sure. Um, But, yeah, you know, the Bakhtiari situation scares me a little bit, I guess. The fact that it's still this long into it and we're still not back. um, Yeah, it just they're one I'm, I'm, I'm a little torn with, I guess, altogether. You know, Preston Smith, I did not think had, like, 
the you know the greatest year the last two years. I think he was better last year than he was two years ago. Uh, so I guess that's what my my concern is with them a little bit. But the wide receiver thing is definitely a, a big issue too, as well. Like you said, he was activated from the pup list. Yes, that's good. Tiari, that's so good. That's good. That's good to hear. Way to getting back. All right, we're into the top two now. Yep, your number two roster in the NFL, non quarterback edition. Bucks. I'm gonna go with the Bucks. And even though, like, man, the injury and in, you know the middle there is a little scary with me for sure. I. <laughs> I just go, okay, weapons, yes. You know, running back, I know not like special, but still good enough and going to be able to play the style of football they want. Defensive line, I think, is where I'm like just blown away by them. Linebacker, I'm blown away. You know, safety, I love Antoine Winfield. I think their corners are a little underrated. So – I look at the Bucks as a team that, yeah, I just look at them and go, holy shit, there's a lot of damn good players on their football team across the board where they have explosiveness and size and power to kind of play either game. Like, oh, we got to play a little bit of a fast team here. We can do that. Oh, we got to play a, like, slug it out and overpower you type of thing. They can do that too. So I'm a big fan of the Bucks roster, as you can see. I mean, I, I just have a hard time thinking that they won't be, you know, and not that, you know, I, I listen, I know they have Brady, but if, if they didn't have Brady and they just had a good quarterback, right, I'd still go, fuck, the Bucks are going to be a handful this year. They're, they're just legit across the, the board. Carlton Davis, to me, is, is really damn good. Jamel Dean is really damn good. Sean Murphy Bunting is really damn good to me. And then the D-line is, when you just take Vita Vey and Akeem Hicks and Shaq Barrett and Dr Joseph Tri you know, Tryon Shyanko and now Logan Hall and you add him to the mix. And it just I, I guess it's the, the killer aspect again that I look at to go, damn, there's just so many big killers on their team. Uh, and then the weapons on the outside that I love. And, uh, you know, Devin White to me is still one of the best linebackers in football. And I guess that's where I kind of look at it. Yeah. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. New addition, Russell Gage. I mean, really, you can look at it, and outside of the offensive line, yeah, which I still think could be top ten, even with the I, injuries I, there. I, right? I, I know that's where it's that's the toughest part with them. I um, know. If they if they hadn't had injuries, would they be number one for you, or would no? I don't think they would be. So, I think you know the team that's coming up that's going to be number one now that I've already kind of said that there's a team that we're, we're missing here. But yeah, I mean the yeah. tight end thing I think's going to be good. Is they're missing Gronk, but they're going to be good there. But, yeah, the, the the offensive line thing, it was hard for them just because, too, it's just like, okay, wait, I know I haven't seen these guys, but they, they seem to have an eye for the old line. So I guess I'm trusting it a little bit, too, with going, okay, you know, the kid from Notre Dame is going to be real. He'll be all right. He's going to be good. Uh, you know, with Keanu O'Neill and Mike Edwards at safety, I guess there's just there's too many physical killers that I looked at on their team not to have them up here. You know what? You're what? preaching to the choir because I had them number one. You have number They're one. They're my number one. Yeah. Okay. Roster good. Good. In all good. of football, right. so the Bucks are my number one. Yep. The only other one you don't know for me is number two, who is not in your top five. Who knows how close they were? Yeah. Number two for me. After looking at it, yeah, was the Cleveland Browns. Mm. Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. I know how much you like Nick Chubb, so let's start on offense there. Yeah, best running back combo in the league. Perhaps. I think so. They I might think, be yeah. number one. I think it's probably number one. I mean, you can talk about best offensive lines in the league. They've Definitely. been up there. Definitely. You got Amari Cooper now helping right. with the wide receivers. I'm not as high on that. Uh, that I, was uh, the thing that scared me yes. with them. That was the thing that scared me. The receivers scare me a little with them. That, that put them over the edge. I'm afraid Amari Cooper outside in the cold on grass, which he never performs well, is going to be not as existent as we think he should be. That's the only weakness, but you have the running backs in the offensive line. Definitely. And so that was solid. Definitely. And then on defense, he just got studs everywhere, right? Defensive backs with Denzel Ward and John Johnson at safety. Newsome. Knew some like the young up and coming guys for them in the defensive right. So Lucy Koromoa, Delpit, a linebacker. Williams, yep, J O K, and then you got Miles Garrett. Yeah, we haven't even mentioned him yet. Yeah, uh, Jadavian Clowney. We'll see what we get from him. That's what uh, scares me. That's what I didn't like. That's where they were top. There were a couple to me. question marks. Right. I'm not sure about the rest of their D line. I guess that's what scares me about them. I love Wusu Koromoa, but I'm not sure about the other linebacker. All right, and then, mm -hmm. you know. Hey, I like the tight end. I do, but I think it's still a little bit of a projection, I guess. And you know, everything else you said is right. This is that's where it was tough. I mean, it, it was tough. They're they're a team that is certainly on my list here of these 
Uh, and they were in the top 10 ish for sure. But I just, I couldn't put them in my top five. And I guess the D line is what ultimately scared me from them more than anything. D line and wide receiver is what scared me from putting them in my top five. Um, and your number one is the 49ers. They're just the 49ers. I just like, I think it is, it, it's them or the Eagles are the best O line. You know, the, the Browns are right there with them. So, but, but uh, to me, they just have, Everything in that standpoint. And then you got George Kittle. And then, you know, Ayuk and Debo Samuel. It is very special, those two. And you even add in, you know, the, the kid Gray from SMU who can fly, right? So I look at that and just go, shit, okay, he's damn good. The D-line, you know, I'm, I'm projecting like Javon Kinlaw to be a fucking killer a little bit. And I think Nick Bosa, as we talked about, is – unquestionable like one of the best defensive players in football right you know i have faith in the other guy the other guys on the edge that you know of course eric armstead's amazing warner i think is the best middle linebacker in football so you know i get into that i talked about the safeties a little earlier here you know legerius need at corner i like that aspect of it so I, I i just i look at them and i and the running backs i just go shit you know what is the issue with them and that's where um, I guess I make them the number one roster in, in all of football. We agreed they're in the top five. Yeah. Um, we what else did we agree on? Bucks were in the top two. Right. And that was about it. Well, Eagles. So no, did we have? Do you have Eagles? I had Eagles at eight. Eight. Okay. Okay. Here, I'll, go, I'll give you my top. Uh, my top. Yeah. 10 go ahead. Let we, me hear it. So I had six. I had Rams. Right. Rams were six. Mm. Chargers seven. I couldn't go Rams that high. Rams did not make my top 10. I think they're too top heavy. They're too top heavy. You know, now this is where the conversation's really good about doesn't mean they can't be a top 10 or top 16 because the way they're coached and the way they play and McVay can hide some of the offensive line deficiencies and, you know, they're creative on defense and, you know, but the D line, linebacker position, I question a little bit. All right. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I think I, I think. I don't know. Just yeah, they, were, they they scared me from that aspect. Jalen Ramsey, still awesome, but I you know again I, that was a playoff not to remember by him, whether it was the Bucks game or the Super Bowl. That scared me a little bit. Yeah, it's a little top heavy to your point. I think that that's what scares me. Chargers got some names too out there in uh, L.A. with Khalil Mack now and J.C. Jackson. I, 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 they had know, to be in your honorable mention. They were in, they're in my they I like I wrote the number eight down for them. Okay. You know, as in my rough, my rough you know top ten there. But yeah, I mean, because I think they've improved the O line. The receivers are damn good. Running back, we know they got one of them. I don't know who else the other one's going to be. You know, linebacker, I question That's a little, question, right? Yeah. Kenneth Murray, can he be a guy that really helps know. them out? You know, they got what's his face from um, the um, the Rams. Um, I'm going to blank on his. No, they got Sebastian Joseph Day too, but they got the the linebacker uh, from oh. from the Rams too. Hold on, you know, Reed, Reed, Troy Reader. Thank you very much. Way to go. Yeah, they got him. You know, we know the secondary is going to be damn good. Asante Samuel, J.C. Jackson, Derwin James. Holy shit! So yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm with you there. Eight was Eagles. Nine was Bengals for me. I, Bengals were seven for me. I got a seven for you the Bengals. You did do a top ten. I did. It was rough. It was rough. I didn't feel like I wanted to go. I didn't get to spend like as much time on it as I would have liked to <laughs> with traveling to name. Buffalo. Yes. So I was a little scared to like get into the top ten weeds of that department there. Right. But yes, them, you know, the Saints, the Dolphins yeah. are are in my top ten. You know, and then it got into like, wait. You know, the Titans, the Browns, and the Colts. What do I do with those? And that's where it was like I got tight there. So, I, you know, and, and so I was, I was in the air a little bit about that, that one a little bit. The Titans I wanted to put in the top ten, and I just – because I like a lot about them. But the O-line has got a few new pieces. Uh, the secondary doesn't blow me away. They got great pass rushers, and we know the running back, and the receiver thing scares me a little. So that's where I just was like, okay. But again, the way they're coached, the style of play they play, and I, you know, again, I could certainly see them being a top five, top six team in football. So it was a very interesting, you know, and, and you know, I think with two is, you know, we don't get into these conversations a little bit. It's like we hit on all the big names, yeah, like with the 49ers being our one and our two. 
and the Bucks. We don't even get into some of the backups, and that's where you just go, holy shit. Like, some of the backups are – they're insane. And when this guy's off the field on the D-line, this guy's going to be in, and they're going to have no problem there. So that's where it just gets into, like, you look at the complete roster, you know, I, you know, hey, the Emmanuel Mosleys and the Dante Johnsons for the 49ers, you know, adding, you know, a Ken Crowley maybe helps them out this year. It just there, – there's, there's a lot of names to look at to where we go, we didn't hit on with some of these guys. Use check. Right. Drake Jackson. They got Buford on the starting guard. You know, Aaron Banks goes into the, the starting guard position this year. So that's where it's just like uh, it's it's to me. They're 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 a special team that way. Drake Greenlaw. Greenlaw. I can't believe I forgot to say his name. Yeah. You know, their, their duo is maybe up there with the best in football. So sorry to spat off there one no. more time. The last team in my top 10 yeah. was the Buffalo Bills. Oh, the Bills are another one. I should have said that there. Yeah. Quiet Concert says, yeah. do you think the Bills roster is now on the level with the elite rosters in the <sighs> NFL, or do you still think they're going to be carried by Josh Allen too much? So by our rankings, we see that they are not amongst the elite. I had them at 10. They were like they, 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 they were the other team I should have thrown in there that where I was like, man, Bills, Colts. You know, Titans are they ten? But they got pieces and things, and right where they you know should be. I, I guess I want to see their defense align a little bit. Like I, I think it's going to be real good. I think it's definitely going to be bigger and more powerful. You know, I don't not sold. Greg Rousseau is going to be a huge killer on the edge. You know, I like the way Kyrie the Elam looks. Mm-hmm. I think Jordan Poyer's kind of coming to the end a little bit. You know, there's another one. I was really that was a really tough one with me. I, you know, their roster's better. They're a better football team for sure. As good as it's been with Josh Allen, I here. think so. And the O line's going to be better too. Should be. But uh, there's just some things. I guess I just was. I was scared to make them a top five, and they were in that top ten ish for me. You know, the Dolphins are maybe a team I'm a little too high on because maybe I'm projecting a little bit with. You know, I think Jalen Phillips is going to be a real force off the edge. But, damn, I know what Raquan Davis and, and uh, Christian Wilkins are in the middle, and the offensive line has some question. But, damn, we know the receivers and the running backs and right. the corners and the – I mean, the corners and Javon Holland at safety. So this was a really good – I welcome people to question this and have this conversation because this is, this is a good exercise. Let me throw two more names yeah. in there of teams just so we don't get yelled at by yeah. fans of those teams, and I want to see if you think they're in the discussion for yeah. honorable mention right. here. Colts and Broncos. Yeah, def- uh, uh, Colts for sure. Colts were the team, like I said, that I had in there with like the Colts, the you Browns, okay. the Titans. You, said that. Got it. you know where I was like uh, the Bills. Like maybe that's ten, or maybe they're yes. nine. Okay. Right. That's where I kind of had that. Um, who was the other team you said there? Broncos. I, I'm not. I'm not sold on the Broncos. I'm not. There's way. There's too much projection. Don't love their O line. We think their receivers are going to be good. You know, I like their running backs. Their defense line, I got questions about. You know, I like their secondary. Certain's the real deal. I should have made him number one in the draft a few, few years ago. But is like, is is Bradley Chubb going to be what I think he's going to be? I guess there's just some of those kind of questions I got with them a little right. bit. Right? right. The other team that I roughly wrote on the list too, but it's young. It's the Jaguars. The Jaguars to me are a team that's it's again like the on love paper, affair continues. I know. I just look at them and go, you know, they're young, but man, there's there's no position I look at to go. They're going to be physically overwhelmed there, and I think that's you know cool. But you know, again, that's where it's on paper and reality are two different things a little bit. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.